Just God is just so moving in this season. You know, you're going to focus on whatever you... In this season, you can either focus on the storm, you can focus on the stretch, and you can focus on the warfare. You can do all that till the cows come home where you can focus on what God is doing and what He's moving. And I'm telling you, He's moving. He is moving in the earth. Wow. Can we just get back to that space in worship just for a moment? Oh, my gosh, tonight, just the glory of God is in the house. And I just feel like we just need to, like, sit and just, just get back there for a minute. Holy Spirit, oh, we just want to receive from you. We're going to receive from you tonight, God. He's just like this constant flowing, you know, Loretta, where are you? Stand up. Come out here for a minute. This is a new season for you. I feel like it's, it's your refiring season. And I feel like it's a new level of authority. And I feel like I heard the Lord say that your words will travel far in this season. Your words will travel far in this season. There's about to come a new dimension of, uh, of the, the words he's going to give you that are weighty. And I feel like they're going to go out into nations. And for whatever reason, I keep seeing New Zealand over you as well. And I feel like the Lord's saying that um, I'm going to cause you it almost like there's this, this camaraderie with New Zealand. He's going to begin to give you words of destiny over the nation. So, Lord God, I thank you for what you're imparting, you're releasing to her in this season. It's a, it's a new assignment, but it's also, Lord God, it's a new anointing, 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 says the Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Cliff, step up here, my friend. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I was like holding back from coming over to pray for you and worship. I was like, this guy. I heard um, Home and Away, like the, the show, home and away and um everyone knows you moved here it's home but there's a way and you've been trying to look for something here that is also out there and the lord says this is home but there's also destiny away and i see this back and forth and i feel like there's this like revival fire anointing on you and i felt the lord say you've been looking for people to validate it but i've given it to you roboka the lord says home and away, and this will be the season of the releasing it here, and away, and you don't need permission to release it. I break that off, yeah? You're going to release it home and away. Go back to the Netherlands. Go back to those places. He's telling me he's going to go, and I just feel like the Lord said, there is just Holy Ghost adventure. Holy Ghost adventure on you. You don't fit the little box and doing the same old mundane. It's going to frustrate your spirit. It's going to cause you to stifle that creativity upon your life. And that, that evangelistic anointing needs to flow in a space that's not, it's fluid. It's going to be not like confined. So God, let him just have the funds for the adventure you're calling him on that's going to ignite. Lord God, revival fire in the nations in Jesus' mighty name. Come on. Man, God is so much fun. Like he just is so just... You know, this is a season I've been learning a lot from my kids. Um, they just they just carry so much excitement. And sometimes I feel like, um, you know, we, we're doing ministry, we're doing school, and we're doing all these things. And, you know, we're busy. And I'm like, oh, I've got a word to write. I've got this. And sometimes they're like, but Dad, let's play. And I'm like, oh, you know. And Christy and I have been learning a whole new rhythm of just sometimes putting down the pen or the computer and, you know, just being with our kids and learning the, the joy and excitement of what kingdom looks like from the perspective of a kid. And I tell you what, it's been doing something in us. It's just like, um, it's, it's like it shows you God's perspective of what he's doing in the earth in a completely different way. Because we can look at kingdom and, and life and it's so rigid and so serious and, and it is. And there are moments even when I'm speaking, you're like, oh, I, I feel like I just shift into this, you know, this thing. And it is, it's all about nations. It's all about the hour and everything. But at the same time, God's like, do you see what I'm doing, what I'm pouring out in the earth? So Jesus, that's not even my message, but let's just get into it. Oh, Robocon, I'm just burning tonight. There's a burning. There's a burning. There's a burning. There's a burning. God, let them burn tonight. We only got an hour to let us burn. Let us burn. You know, there's a there's that there's that quote. There's a quote by John Wesley. I had a dream that I was in a field watching John Wesley preach about two months ago, and it wrecked me. I was watching John Wesley preach in a field, and I was offended by his words. This is a guy, I don't even, I haven't really researched him that much. This is a guy who said, 
That's not the picture. Light yourself on fire with passion and people come from miles to watch you burn. This is a guy who spoke about holiness. This is a guy who spoke about consecration to God in a way that we haven't heard in this kind of season we're in, in this Western culture. We don't talk about that stuff because, you know, we want to kind of keep it, keep people in church, I guess. Just scared of maybe people will leave when they, they hear that destiny doesn't always, in, it's not always about them. There's nations and things attached to it that's not about you all the time. Right? I love talking about that stuff, but it's not always about that. And I, I feel like that we've turned a corner in the body of Christ and God's like, who, who are the ones who will just simply give their life to me completely? It's like just completely say, God, what, whatever it is you do, like I want to I wanna give all for that thing. I, I'm not, there's none of me. I don't have a backup plan. I, I, I'm, I feel like I know in my life I'm tired of having backup plans. I'm done with backup plans. It's too much hard work trying to have one. It's better just to fully commit, even if it looks crazy, because that's where the, that's where the glory is going to be. I feel like where we're going in the body, it's, it's, there's been a shift. You've been through so much warfare in this season of your destiny. You've been through the stretching. You've been through the fire. There's not much of you left anyway. Let's just be honest. <laughs> you know... <laughs> Christy and I, you know, we're, um, we're moving overseas and sometimes we're, we're looking at homes and, we're, you know, we're like, where, where's that faith level at? And we're like, oh, yeah, we can believe for that for a house. And, you know, and then you start getting more and more in price and then the soon you get to a certain, you're like, oh, forget it. This is belief for millions, you know, like, let's just go down. Because it's like, by that point, what's, you know, and I feel like it's the same when you go through these seasons where it feels like the stretching and the refining and the fire and everything. It's like, I'm all in. I got nothing left. I got, I got no agenda. Uh, and then God's just glory goes and pours out. But anyway, I wanted to share something. I was on the way here tonight and I heard the Lord say this to me. He said, you can tell how deep my fire has burned you with what you do with it afterwards. I'll say that again. I want you guys to get this. You can tell how deep my fire has burned you with what you do with it afterwards. My heart's just been in this season. I've just been like... Less and less do I have any cards on the table to play. It's just been this space of God. You want all of me. And I, I, I just burn. Just just go. Just do the whole nine yards. I'm ready. Just just burn. And I feel like there's just something in that in this season. Sometimes we try to avoid uh, this process that God leads us through because it feels uncomfortable. I was talking to my friend over here earlier about it, but just this place where God's fire and intensity is so just on you, but it's producing. Just like Loretta, there's an anointing that's grown from that place of pressure, from that place of crushing. There's anointing that comes. It's no longer about you anymore. There is a space where it is about your destiny. There's a, there, there's a, there's a season where it's about you discovering and your unveiling and, and all that kind of stuff. But you're crushing in all those nights where you're just in absolute mental anguish and torment. The enemy's trying to do everything he can. He's throwing his absolute arsenal at you where suddenly you just got nothing of you left and suddenly that oil begins to drip from your life. You wake up the next day and breakthroughs happened and people around you are getting set free. That's what happens in a season like this right now. Anyway, I get some of my notes out. Do you have, um, is that a video up there? I got sent a really cool video this morning. I just want to show you guys. I don't know what it has to do with this, but I've just been so blown away by um, what God's doing in the earth right now. He's just burning on the hearts of kids. And I got sent this video from these people this morning that watch one of my soaking videos online, and they just get their kids laid out soaking to it. 
um, and they're just encountering God, having Holy Ghost. What did she write to me? Let me just find it. Wow. My daughter was baptized by fire today watching your video. And then it was just about three or four videos of these kids just trembling and shaking in the presence of God and encountering Jesus and having them speak to them. That's the time we're living in, you know. I'm not sure if you can get that up. It's only like 30 seconds, I think. But this has just been, oh, this has just been doing something to me lately. Just um, watching um, our daughter Charlotte. She's been going through, here we go. Yeah, that one, the second one. Yeah, that one's good. I'm not sure if it's going to work. If it doesn't work, it's all right. You get the idea. <laughs> it's a good picture, yeah. I'll Instagram it later. No. Anyway. There's just been something that God's been using my kids to really, uh, to really reveal to me in this season, and that is that it's just this simple hunger of God, like, I want you at all costs. What does it, what is it like to go back to that space where you first encountered God? What is it like back there where it was just, it was nothing else. It was just you and a, just this, you felt his burning love for you. I just feel like that's the space God is, is reminding us of in this season. Yeah, it's not going to come up. That's okay. But we've been in a season of heart surgery. We've been in a season where God has been moving powerfully in hearts and lives. And, you know, in one aspect, you can look at it and go, that's the enemy. He's trying to rob me. He's trying to steal from me. Yeah, he is. Because anytime God's trying to do something that's genuine, there is a counterfeit. God is not trying to burn you, to hurt you. He's trying to protect you because that's the safest place you can be in a storm and in a shifting season. It's in the middle of the shifting. It's in the middle of that space. God's like, my fire is intense, yes, but you get into that space. That's the most protected place you can be. The very thing you've been dreaming of seeing will only come through this avenue. And I feel like the Lord is right now releasing something fresh in the earth and he's cutting away where we've been attached to the world and attached to all these different ideas that keep robbing us from being effective. We need to be a holy people, a royal priesthood. That's what we're called to be. We're not called to just come along to church and we sit in that certain seat every Sunday and we'd never discover what it's like to burn and then go outside the doors and the walls and burn again. We need to have that conviction in this hour. It's not up to the four people that, you know, do this every day. It's it's about us being released out there to burn. There's a burning. There's a people that are called to burn and it's all of us. And he's like, who will be my burning ones? And um, it was about six weeks ago now, I was in worship and uh, at home and I went into this vision where I saw this sword and I was holding it out. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. And straight away, I'm like, this is the ruling sword of the season. This is like the season of authority because we are in a season where God has been revealing to us what it's like to rule and reign. And we're going to smash the nations with, you know, that that scripture that speaks about ruling nations. And God's called us like in Matthew 28 to disciple the nations. And I knew this was like, wow, this is our authority. This is our scepter. This is like, God, that governmental anointing you've placed upon our shoulders in this season. And then suddenly the sword went back into my heart. And I felt this intense, like, whoa, what is that? And the Lord said, who, wh- what generation, will this generation arise in holiness? Will there be a generation that will arise that will not be in love with what the culture and the things of this world, but will allow me to cut them deeply so that they can go and reveal me to the nations? And I've been so convicted of this. I'm just like, God, like, we've got this wrong idea of what holiness is. We're like, we, we think it's like it's, our ex, it's God, you're going to expose me. God, you're going to, uh, you know, unravel my life. And it's not that at all. It's not even like that. That's old covenant holiness where we're trying to measure up to something we're never going to measure up to. New Testament holiness is the resurrection power of Jesus I'm going to read this scripture to you. I'm going to say it right because I'm not Mark Greenwood. I told him, I told him, hey, are you coming tonight? 
Because if he's sitting in the front row, I'm going to mess up. And he doesn't read from the Passion either. So, you know, he's got some things wrong. So let's just... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Marky. Enjoy your anniversary, brother. If you're watching, love you. Love you guys. That guy's a weapon, man. We process so much together. Well, like, we process. It's really good. It's really healthy. I come from this prophetic angle, and he's probably sitting with his Bible checking everything I'm prophesying. And, and, like, and he's like, got so, his theology is so, like, sharp. I'm just like, oh, Jesus, help me. But he's... um. He is a weapon in this place. Um, it's funny because he, he's like the guardrails, but it's, it's not like that. It's like I just see him in this incredible way. He's such a protector of, of what, we, what we're believing and ingesting, and I'm just really grateful for him in my life. Oh, Jesus, help us. And I want to read this scripture, actually. Joel 2.13 says, Rend your heart, not your garments, and return to the Lord. I feel like God's doing something really special in the body of Christ right now because we're coming into a, a time where we're going to see harvest. But unless we, unless we are properly set apart unto Him from the culture of this world, we'll not, allow, we'll not be able to influence the world that is looking for us looking like that. We're looking too much like this right now. I recognize it even in my own life. I'm like, you know, the things that we... Let's just, let's just paint a few pictures in, in Christian culture right now that is very much like the world. We look to celebrities. We do. If somebody on Elijah list, you know, shares a word, we're going to maybe value that over someone down the road. Um, there's a ton more things. We need to adjust ourselves back into a place where we're not, we're not in love and in absolute, uh, you know, in fascination to the things that the world idolizes and values. We need to detach from that. And we, what holiness is in this season is God saying, this is the way that's going to, you know, it even says in Isaiah, the way of the highway of holiness. It's like it's a whole different way. It's like it, it looks different to that over there. Don't be, conf don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's a whole, totally different way of doing things. We need to adjust to this space because that's the place that fruit's going to come from, not that over there. And if we really want to be effective in the house and also sent, we're going to allow God to do what he needs to do in the shaking season so he adjusts us so that we can be effective out there. I tell you what, I want fruit more than I want comfort. I'm glad I finally got that one because Holy Spirit's been trying to get that to me for a long time. Thanks, mate. You know, um, in Daniel 1, I don't have it here with me, actually. Let me look it up. In Daniel 1, we read the story of Daniel in captivity people of God in captivity. Daniel, because he was royalty, he got taken to the palace to serve. And he had to know all their customs and everything like that. But there's this one particular story that it, it just does something to me every time I read it. All right. So they were called to serve in the king's court in the palace and had taught the language. It says in verse 5, The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table, and they were to be trained for three years, and after that they were entered the king's service. Among those, anyway, let's move on. Daniel, verse 8, Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine, and he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Now God has caused, God has caused the official to show favor and compassion to Daniel. But the official told Daniel, I'm afraid of my lord, my king, who has assigned your food and drink? Why should he see you looking worse than the other young men your age? The king would then have my head because of you. Daniel then said to the guard, um, please test your servants for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed to do this and tested them for 10 days. 
At the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. So the guard took away their choice food and wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables instead. Hear this. To these four young men, God gave knowledge. Oh, sure. Whoa. <laughs> to these four young men, God gave knowledge an understanding of all kinds of literature and learning, and Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. And then it says in verse 19, the king talked with them and he found none equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. In every matter of wisdom and understanding, which about the king questioned them, he found them 10 times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. Whoa. (sighs) Any prophets in the house? I'm telling you, this is a season being set apart. You got to be. You got to (sighs) be. It's it's interesting. The first three words I broke down are all about God gave them like earthly humanistic knowledge. Like it's it's, it's strange. It's like, well, God, wouldn't you just want to give us like Heavenly knowledge and wisdom, he did. But firstly, he said he gave them knowledge, skill, and literature. And those words, you look them up, they all mean, they all mean things like um, knowledge, understanding, expert level of understanding things. It's all, it's all just, it's all stuff that you would do if you went to school. So why would God give them that? It's because he wanted to anoint them to speak the language of the day So that when God gave them the wisdom, the heavenly wisdom, they would receive it. It, It's it's funny because when it comes to being set apart, we've somehow looked at being set apart as we're going to be like separated over here. We're going to be Amish and we're going to like, we're going to cut ourselves off from the rest of the world because you're you're evil and you're defiled. And and the only way that I can be set apart to God is if if I live under the ground with, 1,100 cans of baked beans and sing Kumbaya. That's not holiness. That's, that's just your creepy Christian. I don't want to be creepy. I don't want to be that guy. You ever sit down in the back at a conference and you go, hey, you know, anyway, I don't want to get into that, you know. <laughs> All right. Let's go back to your place after for lunch. It's, it's just we need, to not, we, we need to realize what holiness in the new covenant means. It's, it's a separation. It's, it's a heart thing. Jesus was holy. Jesus is holy. But yet he could sit down with tax collectors, thieves, and not compromise. And the, and the Pharisees, who only knew what it was like to be whitewashed tombs, that's their holiness which they never measured up to anyways. It was all rubbish. Yep, that was my word that I was thinking. And Jesus would go and sit with these people and he would be holy in their midst. Why? What did that do? I love that phrase Bill Johnson says, in the old covenant, you touch a leper and you get leprosy, but in the new covenant, you touch a leper and they get healed. So what what does that tell you about being holy and righteous in the new covenant. You don't need to hide from the world. It's something you cultivate that is powerful, that when you walk in it, in your metron, it affects and infects that. In the same way leprosy, would you, you're, you're contaminating your area with the kingdom, and holiness can't help but produce. The answer to a world that is in identity crisis and the answer right now to a world who can't see up from down, who is so confused, is a people who would allow God to cut them and burn them here so that they could be that out there and affect the world. And the world would then go, that's what I've been looking for. I just didn't know the language. I didn't know what it was. And they'd say, what is that? And they would step into the flow and they would become a holy and righteous people like Jesus. That's what we're called to be. Holiness is a culture shifter. It is. It's a culture shifter. Because 
there's a lot of Christianity that just looks like everything else. And I'm not, I'm not against that. I just know for me, I'm just like, I'm not going to forsake holiness to be relevant. Jesus is going to be relevant. I'm telling you, you, you walk up to a guy who, you know, I mean, you walk up to a guy who looks completely like a goth and you're like, you're dressed in jeans and you look like a completely different person. You're, una- you know, he might be unapproachable. You're like, we're totally different people. But I'm telling you what, Jesus will speak his language. You don't need to go, oh, I, better go I better go get a trench coat and tats to be able to speak to this guy. That doesn't, oh my gosh, when do we do this? Why? Oh, how stupid. Do you, you know, when you're like, do, do you ever feel really like you've just, you know, do you ever feel like a phony when you're in a conversation? We've all done this. When you're in a conversation, you almost like, you feel like you're not really holding to your convictions and you're like, oh yeah, and people are talking rubbish and, uh-huh, and you don't really point it out or say, you're like, uh-huh, and you walk away and you just feel like a phony for not really being yourself. God wants us to be us, and He wants us to be kingdom people that are holy, and we don't have to compromise to walk in a situation. We simply walk there, and suddenly the environment we've created through our lives, lay down for Jesus, burning, begins to light up the darkness, and they'll come running to us. We don't need to try to figure out some marketing sales technique to try to get them to Jesus. That's never worked, and never in the long run anyway. I remember the movement of, you know, people get ready. People get ready. Jesus is coming back tomorrow, and that's all true. But there was that song that went out years ago. I'll tell you what, I was like nine years old. I used to go to bed crying every night in fear that, you know, that fear never, ever got people, you know, to to love God. It's the opposite of what you need. They need to know that He's the God of love. All right. So like Daniel, God's God's wanting us to know how to eat differently. In this hour. That's it. That's my message. We need to eat differently. We need to feast differently so that we can set the feast for the lost sons and daughters. They're like, what's this? I haven't tried this before. Dig in. This is going to bring life to you. Life more abundantly. Mm, this is good. Come sit down. Take a seat. Break. Just that shame's going to fall off you. And take another bite. That's the feast that we set as we develop different appetites to the world. It needs to be different. You know, Christy and I have tried to be vegan. Um, Christine's even sent me uh, eating plans to be vegan. Hasn't worked. <laughs> I look at it and go, I can't do it. I just can't. I grew up like farm, like, you know. I've just got a different way of looking at things, and my kids don't want to know about those days. But we, we probably eat one meat meal a week, which is pretty amazing, really. We eat a lot of veg- vegetables and stuff. But um, I don't know. It's just been a, a struggle for us to try to get completely, even though Christy hates meat. You know, she can just have, chick- um, she can just have a little bit of um, steak occasionally because I'm a steak master. Um, but something that Christy and I have been talking about lately with that, is just what is it like to develop an appetite that God wants us to have with every part of our life, every part, every facet of our life, an appetite that, you know, sometimes that means an appetite for what we're feeding ourselves with media. Right now, distraction's the biggest. If, you, if you're wondering why the enemy's constantly at your door, warring at your mind, just turn the TV off for a week. Turn your phone off. I've even, like Christy and I do a lot of stuff on social media. I can't look at anything lately. I've just been in the season. God's like, I only want you to post. That's it. I can't do much more. There's so much chatter out there that's going to steal my peace. And God's been saying, what price do you put on your peace? We need to develop different appetites. You know, Christy uh, found out this statistic the other day that, you know, um, I think the 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 anxiety level of today because of social media is more than those that came back from the war in, in, the, in the 40s and 50s. And these people, you know, had PTSD and went on medication and all that kind of stuff. These days, it's socially acceptable. It's social media. You're sitting there. I'd still do it. I'm like, oh, I've got to get off this thing. Charlotte's like, hey, Dad, work's done. Yep, cool. Throw it in my drawer. Let's go. 
let's go play. You Lego. And, and it's like, it's this constant decision. What am I going to eat? What am I going to feast? Because what I feast on is going to show. Okay. All right. This was so not the message I was going to preach tonight either. But I feel like, I feel like right now, all right, I'm going to jump to the end because I feel like, what's the time? All right. Yeah, yeah. I, I do have to say this. So holiness... It carries power. We're talking about going in and infecting. I want to read to you where it, it carries power, okay? Where did I write this down? Yes, Romans 1, 4. But as the mighty Son of God, He was raised from the dead and miraculously set apart with a display of triumphant power supplied by the Spirit of holiness. And now Jesus is our Lord and Messiah. So who's the spirit of holiness? Holy Spirit. Because he's the one that makes you holy. And what happened at the cross? His display of power with bringing Jesus back to life was a display of holiness. It was his holiness. So we can expect that living a life that is holy will produce power and miracles around us. It's just a byproduct. We won't have to chase it. It's just is what happens. It's meant to be the byproduct. So many things that we chase in the Christian life are the byproduct of something that we're, we're ignoring. Intimacy. If, if you make that your constant feast, all the gifts, that's just happen. You just, uh, you just say, hey, can I have that? Yeah, boom. <laughs> Sean Bolts level. You know, let's just have some of that. It's the other way around. With, with holiness, sometimes we're, we're trying to... My friend Chris, Chris Kordosha said this, and we had this discussion. He said, much of the miracles that we've been longing to see in the body of Christ have not been dispensed or available simply because we're not embracing a holy life. We've taught in the church about being relevant, We've taught in the church about being comfortable. But it's all been about your destiny, your call, and all that stuff. Like I said, it's powerful. But we've ignored where it's all about laying your life down. What, what, what happened to the whole part about love not your life unto death? No longer I that lives but Christ in me. I want to hear that preached. I'm telling you, like that, like that dream I had of John Wesley and he was preaching, I was so offended. He's talking about a holy life and setting apart and, and in the dream going, this is legalistic. And then I woke up and the Lord said to me, no, I'm branding a generation with this message again. I'm branding a generation with this message again. You know why? Because we're in Isaiah 60 of arise and shine for your light has come. And God's like, I'm bringing my people up to scratch. So the shaking you've been going through, it's okay. It's just God is getting you into shape so that you can see the calling, the destiny that you've been wanting to see in your life. But it's not just about your destiny. It's about what's going to happen in your obedience to step out there. Other people are going to be affected by it too. The very holiness that you've embraced and the very process that you've been faithful. Say, okay, God, this is crazy. This change in my life, this transition has been more than I think I can handle. And then suddenly people start getting set free around you. That's kingdom. We need to get free of us a little bit, I think, in a good way. It's not legalistic. It's just like, man, doesn't it ever just get tiring constantly going around the mountain thinking about your own stuff? Oh, my goodness, I just get bored of it. I'm going, okay, I'm done. I'm going to go out and find somebody to pray for because I'm tired of rehearsing my own junk. Of course I got stuff I'm trying to process through. But Jesus, you're with me. I'm going to go pray for somebody and just give that big old rehearsal, a break, and it suddenly breaks through in your life. It's what happens. Let's get free of us this season. Come on. You know, I, I love Dutch Sheets. He's just incredible. And um, he, he has this, <laughs> if you ever go and uh, there's a message that's been burning in my heart. I feel like I, it's, it's his revelation, but it's just been something that I've just adopted in this season about. And um, 
it, it gave more language to what God was showing me about family and nations. And he speaks about oikos, which is the household of God. And it speaks about nations, the ecclesia and the court of nations and how there has been this duality in the body of Christ, how we're being, you know, in the shepherding movement was all about the house of God and shepherding, discipling people. And that's valuable. But in that process, we forgot about the send and the ecclesia that was meant to go out and transform nations and all that kind of stuff. And how in this season, God's bringing them together. But I love how he has this one thing he said over here in the house of God, God's going to, he, he's, he's the shepherd. He's, he's the one who wants to just, you know, he wants to heal you and restore you. Over here, he'll give you a pat on the back. And over there, he's going to give you a kick in the behind. He's like, come on, come on. And that's what he's like. We have to remember, he's not just our friend. He's not just, he's not just, you know, our, he's not just the, the prince of peace and all those things that we go, oh, that's our, that's our, that's our lover, Jesus. He's also our master and commander. And he's, there's, a, there's a withdrawal he's making on the body of Christ in this season. Come on, be the body of Christ. Arise and shine, and for the light has come. And see, there's this, there's this pulling that we're all feeling this season. It's almost like, man, like how much stretching can you really do? It's because there is a call on your life for nations. There's a call on your life that's bigger than the little area that you have called your destiny and purpose. It's bigger than that. The shaking and the shifting is all about that. There's an expansion happening. It's all about territory. The enemy knows it. It's time you knew it. All right, here's a few scriptures for you. This, okay, Ezekiel thirty-eight twenty-three, and I'll show my greatness and my holiness, and I'll make myself known in the sight of many nations, and they'll know that I am the Lord. Your holiness, it it it, it really does. It's a, it's not just something that affects the household of God; it affects nations. It's both. It's going to change your family. It's going to alter. All the stuff that's been going on in your marriage and your finances, it's going to change all that because it's, you're shifting your appetite and the way you've been doing things that has mess, messing stuff up. And it's like, oh, yeah, okay, God. And you, you, you make those adjustments and those shifts and suddenly things come in alignment. But then over here, it empowers you to do things and operate in functions and anointings you've never even known that's upon your life. It's both. I just want to end tonight with this because we've been going through a shaking. Haggai 2, 6 to 9 says this. I feel like this is one of the commissioning verses of this season. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations. And what is desired by all nations will come. That's you. Whoa. And I will fill this house with my glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, declares the Lord. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord. And in this place I will grant peace, declares the Lord. See, we've been experiencing the shaking, but not realizing that there's a glory pour out on the other side of it. We've been experiencing the fire of God coming and consuming us. And there's been so much adjustments. You've been feeling like you've been in heart surgery that's just lasted for years. There's glory on the other side of it. Romans 8.18 says the same thing. Look that one up. The new wine will always rupture the old wine skin. God's just shifting things. That's okay because he wants you to be able to contain the pour outpouring of his spirit that's coming personally and corporately that you're going to release just like what i see over cliff it's like you've been in this personal space of god just it's funny it's like, i see you like sometimes like a safe like like you you carry so much gold my friend you really do like you're a wealth and other people see it sometimes you just don't give yourself i don't know bro own it this season man you really, really, you, 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 like you, you are a real, like you got, it's not just leadership, that's not flattering to say, but there is, you're a father, and I just felt like the Lord saying, step into that space in this season, like just unlock that safe and let the world just feast on it, bro, because, you know, God doesn't take you through that stuff just for it to sit there, and then you just get frustrated, that's, that's powerful, man, man, I so honor you, I so respect you, thank you for coming up here and sowing into our house and these incredible students and people that you just love so well. 
Oh, Jesus. Wow. We, we, we need the shaking because it, it reveals the foundations that we've been standing on that are not really secure. Uh, this year, I feel like we've discovered more, more foundation. Like, whoa, that wasn't as good as what I thought. And that's okay. You know, I, I even, there's even like, there's even seasoned leaders in this season who've been saying the same thing. doesn't matter who you are. You're, you know, day one in the, in the kingdom, you're going to experience the shaking this season because God is making a withdrawal upon your life. Oh, this is exciting. He's making withdrawal upon your life. Wow. God, I just want to be ready. I want to be able to be dispense the oil. God, I want to be able to dispense whatever it is that you want from me. Whatever the cost, yes. Yes, God. We want to burn for you, God. We want to burn for you. Wow. Wow, God, we love you. You know, I was, um, I had an encounter here at church only a few weeks ago, and, um, I could barely function afterwards, and I went home. I don't know, how, maybe it was a month ago. I don't know. I was sitting over there, and um, it was one of those rare services where the girls decided they were going to stay in kids' church, you know those ones? And um, Christy and I both got to worship. <laughs> and, um, and I was sitting there just enjoying worship like normal, and suddenly I have a very clear vision and it was Jesus, the King of glory. I couldn't see his face because it was so bright, walking down the center of this aisle. And the words that came to me, the train of his robe filled the temple with glory. And at first I was like, whoa, that is so cool. That's amazing. I'm just like trying to stay in it, just watching what's happening. And then suddenly this really cool feeling turned into a feeling I haven't felt in a long time. And it was this feeling of the fear of the Lord and reverence. And I sat there trembling in his presence over there. And I was just like, God, what, what are you doing? Because I don't know if I can handle this. It was like that feeling. And it reminded me of when I worked for Benny Hinn many years ago. And I was a young whippersnapper. And they used to call me up to go and catch people. And I'd just fall over. I couldn't even get on the stage. The glory of God would be so thick. And they're like, you know, pick him up. And uh, I, could, you know, so, uh, <laughs> I couldn't do it for a while until I got used to the glory. I got, had to get used to the level of, of glory. It was so intense. I remember walking up onto the stage just one day, and it's like you, your stomach is in knots the closer you get, and you're walking like you're on, the, like you're on a, like a moon surface or something like this. And the reverence and the fear of the Lord is unlike anything I've ever experienced in my life from that ministry. I've had moments at home that are similar but not as deep. What I had over there was even eclipse that. And the Lord said to me, I'm restoring the fear of the Lord and reverence to my people. And I felt that his presence was also an announcement of him coming in to announce, now it's time for my glory, my church's time to shine. But what comes with that is a reverence for his presence and a people that say, God, I'm willing to be set apart for this. And how much, are you, how much are you willing to let him burn and mark you in this season? That's going to determine what he does in your life. And I believe tonight, this is, this is something that I believe is going to be just a continual theme and message for this next season as God begins to launch because we're in a season of God sending people to nations and different regions and there's this whole reassignment and remantling and new anointing thing that's going on right now because God is repositioning people all around the earth. But there's going to be a constant theme in this season that he's wanting to make sure that his bride is the pure bride he's called them to be so that when the world throws accusations at us, we're not going to be sitting there bickering at each other all the time. It's embarrassing. My friend Seth had this phrase this week he said, Jesus wants his autoimmune disease healed. 
Seriously. Oh my goodness. That so sums up. You've been on social media and you're in the charismatic world the last few weeks. You know what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh. How much can we just want to bash each other? It's ridiculous. That's why I'm not, I'm not going to be scrolling for a while. But God wants us to say, God, we choose to be set apart, whatever the cost, because we want, we want to see the glory. We want to see the glory more than we want to be comfortable. We want to see the glory more than we want to have a cushy Christian position and title. What's that even? What, what, the, you know what? The, the, the greatest position you can have is lower still. Lower, 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 lower still. Let that be the place that you rest and reside. And I, I feel like that God is even, God's even right now, just he's, he, he's just stirring up a hunger in his people that we would choose that space more than the public place. That we'd choose to, that we'd choose to th- th- there'll be words and things he gives you that he says, I don't want you to release that. He's been saying that to me in this season as well. He's like, that's, that's too precious. Nate, can I trust you? to not show off on the encounters you have or whatever to get some people, you know, affirming you. That's being an idol. We like to make calves out of anything we can. We do. We love it. We're like, oh, yeah, that person's got the latest new anointing. Let's go and go to their meeting and worship them. And, oh, as, as long as they can touch me, as, as long as they can touch me, it will be great. And Jesus is like, you can, you can get this at home on your own. Just cry out for him. Just sit every night in his presence, say, God, come mark me. Boom, he's going to do it. He doesn't need some man to touch you to get what he needs to get to you. He's the one we need to chase in this season. We need to not pursue the culture of this world. We need to pursue the one who is holy, and that is Jesus. And as we do that, we become a holy people, a royal priesthood, and then we get released into the world, and things begin to shift and change. I'm telling you right now that every person in this room, I feel the Lord saying that it is upgrade time, that there's the holiness and the siege you've been walking through. I feel like for a lot of these young people over here, I feel the Lord saying, I'm so proud of the season that you've had to walk through, because now you're about to see what I'm about to do with walking in that level of holiness, in that level of being separated unto me and the price you paid to be here at this school and in this season. The Lord saying, you have no idea what I'm about to do in and throughout your life. And there's, I don't know why I keep seeing somebody over here. It's Europe, Europe, Europe. Shore up, okay. For the Lord saying, I just see there is something. There's so many people with a missionary anointing in this season. It's going to be redefined in this season because the Lord says, you, there's this something about carrying and transporting and cross-pollinating. And the Lord saying, there's something that you carry that is so pure. But I want us to decree it over all of you in the mighty name of Jesus, the purity that is upon this people and this house, God. Continue, Father, to protect that purity that is in this house. Continue to protect, Father, just what you're raising up in this hour in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Robin, there's someone here. God is for sure come on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To say, God, I want to burn like that. I want to burn. I want to burn. I don't want a little flicker anymore. I want to burn like that. God, I want to burn. Just let it come out of you. Let it, I, want, I want to burn, God. I want to burn. I didn't come into this just for a little bit of tiny little Christian experience and put something on my resume. I want this for the real deal. I want to know you. I want to see you face to face, God. I want to encounter the King of glory in all his wonder. And the world's going to know it through me. They're going to see that I've been with the King. It's going to transform culture. It's going to go into dark places. It's going to be a light, God. That's what I want. I want to be so set apart and so burning that things can't help but shift around me. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. If you if you're here and you're feeling a burning right now, you look like a or you're feeling like a real strong conviction. Stand up right now. Just in your seat. Don't need to come down. Stand up in your seat. They feel the fire, the Holy Ghost. Feel the Lord saying, "This is a consecration. This is a consecration." Show. I felt the Lord saying, even just what we're talking about before. You're going to forget about you in this season. Wow. Yeah. In the healthy way. <sighs> Some people need to let go of that grief as well. I just feel it's like, it's just the, the, the pain of the, of, of the season. The Lord's are replacing that with a fire that's going to burn. A fire that's going to burn. A fire that's going to burn. 
He's going to eclipse. He's going to eclipse the shaking. He's going to eclipse the, the warfare. Those controlling spirits and the witchcraft that's come at you. It's got nothing on the burning. It's got nothing on the fire of God. Come up higher, says the Lord. Come up higher, says the Lord. Man, I tell you what, get to a higher altitude. That stuff cannot, it cannot function. It cannot function. It's got nothing. (sighs) Lord, release your fire. Release your fire. Release your fire. Baptize us in fire, God. Baptize us in the spirit of holiness. The spirit of holiness be released right now. The spirit of holiness be released right now. Culture shifting. Culture shifting. Nation transforming. (sighs) Family rearranging. Circumstance altering. Fire. 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 I just see mental, mental torment leaving somebody right now. There is somebody in here as well, and the Lord told me at the beginning of the meeting, and I didn't want to address it earlier, I heard the Lord say, there's somebody in here, and it's, what, I'm going to say this with grace. I saw you in New Age as well as dabbling with Christianity. And he's not here to point you out tonight. He's here to say, you're going to feel the burning of the burning one. (laughs) No competition. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. The burning come upon you right now in Jesus' name. Once you've burned with him, you'll never burn for anyone else. <laughs> Burn in us, God. Burn in us, God. Burn in us, oh God. Oh, oh, oh. Just cry out to Him. God, we just. We consecrate ourselves afresh for this season. God, we want you more than it is that we want comfort. We're trying to figure out how to do things on our own, in our own strength for too long. You're at the end of your rope. You're at the end of your rope. Consecrate yourself unto me. This is where your ability stops and mine begins, says the Lord. It's by by my spirit. It's by my spirit. This is going to be a season of encounter and visitation of the King of glory. You're going to be at home and you're going to feel His presence. You're going to feel the train of His robe. You're going to feel the King of glory just staring and gazing upon you. And you're going to begin to burn for nations. He's coming to mantle you. He's coming to brand you. And He's coming to put inside you a call for different places, different regions. Father, this is, this is the era of the sent ones, God, the holy ones, God. This is a season, God, you're raising up disciples, but you're also discipling nations. Father, this is a season, God, that you're raising up the healthy family of God. But God, you are calling an army into formation. Fire burn, fire burn, fire burn, fire burn. Fire burn, yeah. You know when his eyes look at you, it's all over, man. (sighs) 
Even right now, I feel the Lord saying there is assignments I'm releasing. There are assignments I'm releasing. The veil's been torn off people right now, where there's been a veil that's been almost like, you've been feeling like there's been confusion over, your, over where you're called to and the direction. We're not over yet. I just feel like there's something. We need to just even, it's not about striving, but just simply sit in that place. God, let us burn. Let us burn. Let us burn, God. For your glory. For your glory, God. Somebody over here, you've been suffering with depression. The Lord says, I'm, I'm, I'm serving justice upon that thing. I'm serving justice upon depression. Shokaramande. I tell you something. This will be a season that the roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah is not just heard over you, but through you. Because when he, this, he places that conviction upon your life, you roar at anything that does not look like heaven. You roar over anything that looks less than what the blood of Jesus paid for. And there's something that rises up in you and says, this is not okay. Even one degree off our axis and we're in the wrong direction, people. <sighs> Holiness and burning. I tell you what I've been singing lately. And I feel like it's been cutting me to, to, to even just to hear it. I feel like it's been readjusting my values. <sighs> I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Because it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. Because it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Wow. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Because it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. Because it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Let our hearts just say every day, God, what's on your heart? What are you thinking? What are you feeling? What are you saying? <laughs> Don't be surprised if in the months to come you begin to dream impossible dreams for nations. You've been thinking too small, says the Lord. You've been limiting what I've placed upon your life. Don't insult His goodness. There's so much more that He has planned for you than you've seen. Lay down and watch what He does. Someone needs to hear this tonight. Whatever that dream is that isn't working, that ministry, I heard the Lord say, throw it to the ground and you watch how I resurrect it. 
and the new management. It's going to be doors that are open for you. You couldn't even have done. You couldn't have even have. You couldn't have even called the Queen to get to orchestrate. But lean into me. Oh God, we just say yes. Can I just call up the prophets here tonight? Just Loretta. I feel like tonight there are a few people who need some ministry here. If you, um, if tonight, I know there's a lot of people that felt like that God's been doing something here, but I feel like there are a few people that, this is what I want to categorize it as. You know what? Let's just let the prophets minister. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. We're just going to pray for a few people tonight. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. What I sense, though, is just people that are feeling like they're carrying the debris from the past season. And it feels like a struggle to say yes to anything right now. It feels like a struggle to think about anything beyond. I feel like the Lord is cutting. He's separating. So, Lord, tonight, I thank you, God, that even as your fire has been released in this place, God, that they're going to go home and it's going to continue to burn. And it's going to cut off all the weariness and the tiredness of the season. Father, rising from the ashes is a mighty army in this season. Go home, look at yourself in the mirror and say, I'm not doing today, tomorrow like I did. I'm not doing it. I can't do it. God, your power and your might has to show up in my life. I'm not going to keep doing every day defeated anymore. There's something that is going to rise. You're going to feel that roar begin to rise up on the inside of you. Let me say one more thing before before I pass it to these guys. Some of the enemy has been trying to get you to forget in this season. You are a broker of heaven's power. You don't just prophesy and pray and do all the things and it doesn't amount to anything. It produces and the enemy's been trying to frustrate you with your promises because you haven't seen anything. And you feel like there's been very little breakthrough and power and fruit for the, for the walk you've had to do. And the Lord says, this is a new day. You're about to see my power. You're about to see power. You're about to see power, the people that you pray for. You'll see exploits of my power, says the Lord. You're a people of power. Rise up, my people of power. Rise up, my people of power. In Jesus' mighty name. I just felt like there were some people here and you felt like there's been a dampener on you. You know you've got destiny, but you felt a lid. And it's been heavy. It's like a weight of darkness. And you've been, you've been pushing and pushing and pushing. And you're healthy and your mindset's healthy. And you've been fighting the mental battles well. But you just felt this weight, this weight. to see it off in Jesus' name off. Get off in Jesus' name. New levels. Somebody, I don't know where she went. There was a girl sitting here about five rows back. I don't know where you are in the room, but I break it now in Jesus' name. Come out. If that's you, come. Come right now. You feel like you've hit a glass ceiling. It's time for it to come off right now. Thanks, Maddie. She needs a catcher. Thank you, Jesus, right now. Come on, Jane. You're amazing. You hunger for the 120%. God says, I want you to ask for 100, and you ask for 120, and God loves it. Right now in Jesus' name, more, more, more. More of the Word and power in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Word and power right now. And there's a gathering of people around you right now. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> there, there are officers that are gathering around you right now. There. They're not, they're not new soldiers. They're officers. They're coming. They're coming up out of the ranks right now and they're gathering around you. And they're, 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 I see them. They've got flags in their hand. They say, well, we will come to the call. We will rally. And I feel the Lord say, don't hold back. Don't hold back. Don't apologize because the more you run, the more they will rally. So go and go and go. And I saw 
spikes coming out of your shoes. And I felt like the Lord says, everywhere you run, you're going to tear the enemy up. Jesus, more, more, more. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. There's more people. I'm going to give this mic to somebody else and I'm going to pray. If that's you, come over here. The lady in the, you had a leopard print uh, scarf on. Yes, you. Would you come up? What's your name? Karen. Karen, there are much wilder things to come. You thought that you were singled out because you were excluded and rejected. But no, you were singled out because God wanted to minister your heart. Because God has singled you out for a time as this to fuel you, to recharge you, to put His very heart into your heart for the nations. And you have not seen anything yet. Wilder things are going to come. You're a wild one. You're a lioness. It's in you and it's coming out in this season. I can see it. You're burning with fire and the fire you got today you received in faith and that faith will will reach further will reach further every day as you step out as you minister to people as you talk to them as you pray he will follow he will never leave or nor forsake you so every word spoken it will come to pass in jesus name amen i had a really clear vision of the lion of the tribe of judah it was before nate mentioned it and i felt the lord just say the lion of the tribe of judah has come to roar at the carrion birds and i saw these vultures that had been coming to take things that looked like they were dying and i said to the lord well the carrion bird they're designed to clean up mess like ultimately but he said no these were these were assignments from the enemy to take things that that were that were looking like weak. They were weak, and they just were in need of nourishment. So I feel like there's a couple of you in the room tonight who've who've had things that are that have looked like they're on the down. They look like they're on the down. It looks like it's they're dying, and it's there's been there's been a swirling around you. So I'm just going to release in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the lion of the tribe of Judah. That there is a roar of heaven. Thank you, Lord, for the roar of heaven. Thank you, Lord, for the roar of heaven to scare away, to run away, to run away, and the enemy must flee. So right then I felt that someone, yeah, you've had like the, the sensation to vomit tonight. I don't want to call you out, but right now we just speak over you right now. Life, thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that the enemy must flee. The enemy must flee right now in the name of Jesus. I see those, those, those carrion birds fleeing over your life and life being restored. Life being restored in the name of Jesus. Um, Frank and Christine, can I pray for you, please? Give them a hand. I want to honour you. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, Blind Freddie, you don't have to be a prophet. You, you have got the, the mother and father anointing upon you. But that very grace that God's given you is not just for your family. It's not just for this family, but it's, it's for the body of Christ. And you've been pioneering in that. And God's saying, don't look to the left. Don't, don't, look, to, don't look to the distractions in this season because that's all they are. That's all they are. They're just distractions. But you are pioneering something in purity and in prayer and and something that I can't even articulate that you know that God is doing in your life in this God is is he's carving out a path for you to walk so that so that people can walk after you it's 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 in purity and it's it's in mothering and it's in fathering and it's so pure I, I can't even articulate but I just want to bless you with that and I just want to release you. And I just want to say, your children love you and they will follow in your footsteps because they know where to come. They know where to come, Frank. And I just release that, Father God. 
I just bless them. I just bless them with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, Lord God. I thank you, Father God. I thank you for the cry of intercession, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that in this season you are bringing a deepening to her heart, Father God. It feels like, Father, her her heart's been ravaged, but really, Father God, you're just making her heart bigger so that she can contain more of the glory of God, Father God, that you want to bring to her, Father God. We just release that right now, the glory in Jesus' name. Um, I just saw like a picture of, um, I saw it as soon as I, s- I started walking up, was like uh, like a snake coiled around like a head. I know it's like a full on picture, but I-, I felt like there was even like a heaviness. And um, and for people who maybe have, they felt like they're in warfare all the time in their head, like racing thoughts. And, and like, it's, it felt like a heaviness though, like something sitting heavy on your head. And I felt like, um, if that's you can, you, can you just come up quick? I feel like the Lord, He actually just wants to unlock something in a deeper place in you. And so He he wants to like divert your attention to a different place of connecting to Him. So, um, Uh, the word I got was um, trauma, you know. Um, Nate was saying that it's been one humdinger of a year and most of us have been going through it and God's been shaking and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, uh, there's been trauma. People have been under trauma. And I just want to pray for the people because, you know, don't suffer on your, on your own. You know, come and we'll pray for you and set you free from that stuff. So is there any people here that really had a humdinger of a year? And that you feel that you've been under trauma. It's been traumatic. God's been doing a shaking, but it's been traumatic. You don't have to carry it. Okay. Praise the Lord. Rachel, I had a word for you. Come on. Give Rachel a hand. (laughs) Feel the weight of the Lord. the weight of the Lord. It's time to come out of hiding. It's time to come out of the cave. He's kept you hidden in the cleft of the rock. And he's spoken tenderly to you. Just like in Haggai where where she was taken into the desert and the Lord spoke tenderly to her. The Lord has taken you into the desert and he's spoken tenderly to you. And the words that He's spoken to you need to be released. He's taught you in the secret place what it looks like to do intimacy in a different way. You speak a new language. The Lord has downloaded a new language of intimacy to you and you need to start teaching it. I know you do this in your field already. But the Lord says, think bigger. Think bigger. You've been thinking national teams and start to think global. It's time to start thinking global. Rachel, it's time to start thinking global because the Lord remembered Rachel. The Lord has remembered Rachel. The Lord has remembered Rachel. And she will bear children and she will bear fruit in this season for the Lord has remembered Rachel. And it's time. It's time to stop pretending. You're not pretending anymore. It's real. It's real. It's real. It's real. It's real. real. What you carry is real and it's going to change nations. It's going to change the scene. It's going to change the sporting industry. What you carry is going to change the face of what we know as sporting industry today. We're going to see a radical shift through you, Rachel. 
And there are sportsmen and women who will come to the Lord because of the legacy that you sow even now in your tears. For the Lord has remembered you, Rachel. Yet up I'd like to pray for the man just in the very end. Yes, you. <laughs> What's your name? Brayden. You seek the Lord so beautifully. And the Lord is so pleased how you seek Him beautifully, how you deli- diligently seek Him daily, whatever, and all the offerings that you've given Him, all the little things you've been faithful in the little, offering Him worship in the little, and it's so beautiful. And He's going to increase the beauty and the glory within you. And when you step into those ministry places um, uh, that you're called to, that will just burst out. I feel like he's filling a tank, he's filling a tank and you think, oh, when is it going to explode? When, it, when is it going to go out? When is this ministry going to start? But just keep calm. You're doing the right thing. And once he says go, all of that will just explode out. And you will, you will, the, the glory of God, it's about the glory of God being revealed to other people so they can see him, so they can find him, so they can belong to him. And that's your call. And it's so beautiful. And there's nothing wrong with you. And you're doing everything right. You're seeking Him the right way, and this is the right way to go. go. The, the path is narrow, but you're walking the narrow path, and you're doing it so beautifully. And men are going to look up to you. They were going to walk in the footsteps of you. You're going to disciple nations. I see you discipling nations. I see especially men, young men, following your footsteps, asking you questions questions and doing the things that you do because they see the glory of God within you, hope of glory within you. In Jesus' name, amen. All night, God's heart's just been boom, just on you. And I almost like felt like there was like a desperation. Like, I don't know why, if it's like 11th hour desperation, but it felt like your heart, whether it's circumstantial or not, your heart was in this place, place where I felt the Lord like wanting to respond like in a major way to you. And um, it was like a longing of your heart. It's like feeling like this numbness and like this this war at you this felt like there's just been so much caving in and changing and I kept hearing emptiness I'm not sure why but it was like a loneliness and I feel like the Lord just saying I'm, I'm, I'm coming to break in I just feel like the, like the the justice of the Lord coming into your situation and it's not like Him rearranging some things that the enemy has really tried to war at you and lie to you about where you're currently at with some things and He wants to know that He's near so Father in the name of Jesus let her feel your peace let her feel your presence I feel like the Lord's saying you're going to feel the visitation of the Lord at home. The place where you normally wallow in sorrow over some of the circumstances, you're going to feel His presence. Father, your peace just washing over her. Supernatural peace and joy. Joy, joy. Let it just begin to bubble forth. Bubble forth in Jesus' mighty name like a river. Like a river, just Lord, the river just flows. She's going to feel like the rhythm of your of your peace, the rhythm of your presence, God, washing and refreshing her, God. <sighs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke every single assignment of the enemy that is warred against her in this season. Be broken in the name of Jesus. I declare she has the mind of Christ. No longer will the enemy continue to bombard her with lies of the enemy. They have no merit. They have no truth and no stock. Let them be exposed in the name of Jesus. Let her peace be restored in Jesus' mighty name. I just saw, um, I saw you crying out to God in your secret place. 
and, and I felt you, your heart towards him saying, do you want me to go out and take this? Are you going to give me the victory here? Do you want me to go out against that? And I felt the Lord say, I am Baal Perazim. I am the Lord that goes up and breaks forth and breaks forth and breaks forth in Jesus' name. You don't have to do anything. He's breaking forth on your behalf in Jesus' name. In every area in Jesus' name. Body, soul and spirit right now. Ha! Ha! He has the victory. Ha! He's bringing the breach. And it's bursting forth like a dam bursting its walls right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. Ha! Total victory. Baal Perazim in Jesus' name. Your night, a visitor here. You're welcome in the presence of the Lord. Goodbye, disappointment. Goodbye, the feeling of insecurity. Oh, you belong here. You to belong with me. And the Lord is breaking shame off. The Lord is breaking off misery. The Lord is calling you home. It's more than destiny. So many of you have been feeling like you don't belong here. That you don't belong here with Him. That you don't deserve to be here. But He purchased you. Your, he purchased you. He made a way for you. I feel that it's so strong. The Lord wants you to know you belong. You belong here. You're not a visitor. You're not just passing through. There's warfare in this house for a sense of belonging. Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. You know why I know? Do you know why I know? Because every day this week, I've woken up feeling like I don't belong in this house. And it's rubbish. You belong here, whether you're visiting or you're staying. You belong here because it's the house of the Lord. It belongs to Him. It carries His name. It carries His presence. You belong in His glory. You belong in His glory. It's time you rise up. Saints, I call you saints. Rise up. Rise up. It's time that you stood up and by faith entered into the glory. It's not a feeling. Glory is not a feeling. You can feel it. I don't often feel it, but I know I'm in it by faith. I'm stirring you up, friends. Because the Lord is calling you to be stewards of glory in your workplace. Stewards of glory in your classrooms. Stewards of glory on the school buses or the public transport or the trains or whatever you are. And if your subconscious is telling you that you don't belong, then you need to tell your subconscious that it's wrong. Your subconscious is wrong. And you're allowed to correct it. Yeah. Actually, no, I belong because I was purchased with a price. I actually really had that word for you guys, that you belong. Like you're not visitors. You're not visitors. Not that you need to move here, but that you, you're you not visitors in the presence of the Lord. You're well, He's well acquainted with you. You are well acquainted with His presence. And you carry such a flavor and a favor over you. It's the favor and flavor of heaven. It's the flavor of favor. It's like a, 
I saw like an ice cream flavor. It's so, it's delicate and and smooth and rich and tasty. And, and just like Nate was saying tonight as he preached, it's, it's the holiness of the Lord that it's magnetizing. It's magnetizing. Like it's, it's going to draw people in. It's going to draw people in. But also you're unafraid to go to the places that need it. Like I saw you going into places with this, with this flavor of favor and it making room for you. And it was like he's given you tools in your tool belt. He's been preparing you. And you've, I feel like you've had like crazy number of jobs even or like different things that you've been doing in the last 10, 5, five 10 years. It, and it's like how are these things, how do these things fit together? But they're like tools. Every one has been a different tool in your tool belt so that when you walk into these places and something needs fixing, you've got every tool that you need. And I feel like the Lord said, you've got every tool that you need and it's time that He's making a way for you. He's opening doors for you and He's He's given you a clear path ahead. So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, we're going to, we're going <laughs> to, that was cool. It's the, I love you guys. We're going to close our service. We are going to close our service. But I just want to, if you, man, if you really, if you haven't been walking with the Lord, if you haven't made a decision to be a follower of Jesus, we don't like to leave a service without giving an opportunity for you to respond. And when you hear about holiness, sometimes we think, you know, oh man, like I've got to get myself clean before I can come to the Lord. Friends, that's like having a shower before, like trying to get clean before you have a shower doesn't make sense. You actually need Jesus. He's the one that cleans us. Okay. He's the one that makes us holy. So like stop trying to clean your own life up and just come to him. So if that's you, um, I'm going to, I'm just going to come over here. I'd love you to come forward and and pray with me. I'd I'd love to connect you because here we, we actually don't just leave you. We actually connect you with someone who's committed to discipling you and and helping you walk out your life in holiness is that cool so i'm just going to be right up here just because i know it's late and if if that's you if that and you know what and even if you're just new in your faith and you've like i've never been discipled i have a team of people so desperate to disciple you like, please just come forward for their benefit, if not for your own. Like, I'm telling you, we, we are hungry to see people discipled who disciple people who disciple people because the nations are crying out for Jesus. Amen. So I'm just going to be right up here. I look like this. So, you know, take note. <laughs> and um, I'm just going to bless you guys as we close. Okay. Is that all right? Who enjoyed Nate tonight? We are so blessed. Thank you, Nate. We are so blessed by you. So, Lord, we just thank you. We bless them in in Jesus' name as they go forth, that they are carriers of your holiness. They're carriers. They're transformers. They're culture shifters. May every person have a deeper awareness of your holiness this weekend even. Greater encounters, greater revelations. May we be stirred up in our great faith to go forth as representatives, for that is what you've called us, Lord, as ambassadors of Christ. You've made us righteous as you are righteous. So Lord, as we leave today, would you bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you guys. I'll be up here for those of you who are wanting discipleship.